Apple just released macOS Sequoia, and if you have a compatible device, you can start using it right away. I'll show you the list of compatible devices on the screen so you can get started quickly, but like any operating system update, it can be hard to know where to begin. So in this video, I'll share the eight things that I think you should check out first when you start using macOS Sequoia. By the way, Apple Intelligence has made my life a bit tricky because I know that you might not have access to it. It might not be available in your region yet, or you might not have a compatible device. So I'll try to focus on non-Apple Intelligence features in this video, but it's almost impossible to avoid talking about them. There are a few features here that do rely on Apple Intelligence, but I'll make sure to let you know when I'm talking about those. Okay, let's get into it. macOS Sequoia has a built-in password app, so you don't need to use a third-party password manager anymore. Everything that you need for passwords is right there in the operating system. It works the same way as it did in previous macOS. When you visit a website with a login page, your computer will automatically save and retrieve your password. You can also see all of your passwords in the app. It's not just for websites, it includes pass keys and verification codes for specific websites, as well as your Wi-Fi codes. One cool feature is that you can tap into any Wi-Fi code, whether you're connected to it or not, and create a QR code for it with a single click. If you've ever wanted to print out QR codes for your Wi-Fi to keep around the house, you can do that now. But the other thing that I really like about the Passwords app is that if you open it and go to Password Settings, you can enable the Show Passwords in Menu Bar setting. With this enabled, you'll see a key icon in the menu bar, and you can click on it to launch websites where you've recently created a new login, or view the recommended details for the website that you're currently on, including the ability to easily copy the password. It might not be the most exciting improvement to macOS Sequoia, but in terms of daily use, I think this is gonna be hard to beat. If you've watched any of the preview videos about macOS Sequoia or even iPadOS 18 or iOS 18, you no doubt already know that calendar and reminders have been integrated really well in this new software update. You can now see your reminders in the calendar app and you can even complete reminders directly from calendar, making the calendar a really productive way to manage your time now. This works especially well on macOS Sequoia because drag and drop is so much easier here on the Mac. For example, I could have my calendar open while I'm working and use it as a way of scheduling my day. Let's say that I receive an email that I want to work on later, but not right now. I can literally just drag and drop the email from the mail app onto my calendar at the time that I want to complete that particular task. By default, calendar will treat this as an event, but you can just tap the button to change this to a reminder. The great thing is all of the additional information that you need gets filled in as well. The next feature is powered by Apple Intelligence, but it's a really good feature, and that's why I wanted to include it here. Thanks to Apple Intelligence, macOS Sequoia now gives you the option of choosing a dedicated focus mode called Reduce Interruptions. You would enable it just like you enable any other focus mode. If I go into Settings and choose Focus, you can see that there is a brand new focus mode showing in here called Reduce Interruptions. If I tap into it, you can see that to begin with, it looks identical to any other focus mode. I can choose to silence notifications from specific people or specific apps, or only allow notifications from specific people or specific apps, just like we've always been able to. The key difference with this particular focus mode is that your device is gonna use Apple intelligence to try and figure out if a particular notification should break this rule. So an example of this would be, let's say that I've chosen to silence text messages from my friend during the working day, because maybe I've got a friend who sends me lots of messages that aren't really useful to me while I'm working and would be better for me to look at later in the day. But what if during the day, my friend sends a message asking for urgent help with something? That's the kind of message that Apple Intelligence would identify as a message that would need to break the rule of my current focus mode and allow that message to come through, even though technically, I've asked for that person to be silenced. My experience with this so far is that it's really pretty good. And because it's based on AI, I would imagine that this is the kind of feature that's gonna get better the more that I use it. And also the more that Apple intelligence gets to learn about me and improve its contextual awareness. macOS Sequoia has got some amazing time-saving features. Something else which will save you a lot of time is Magical AI, who are sponsoring today's video. Imagine being able to automate all of the repetitive work that you do on your Mac in seconds with a tool that doesn't require a degree in computer science to get it working. That's essentially what Magical's no-build automations allow you to do, saving users on average seven hours each week. And better yet, it's a free Chrome extension that works on any site. 
Let me show you how it works. Let's say that you're pulling data from LinkedIn. Maybe you're prospecting for your own business or you're job searching and you want to gather together some leads. You can open up as many tabs in Chrome as you like. And with a couple of button presses, all of the important data that you need is transferred into a spreadsheet. And it works on any sites like LinkedIn, Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, even work tools like Salesforce or Zendesk. Or maybe you need to transfer a load of data into your CRM. Endless copy paste, right? Magical AI makes this so much easier. You just push a button and let Magical do its thing. I really like the AI reply feature. Whether you're responding to emails on Gmail, messages on LinkedIn or WhatsApp, Magical AI can draft personalized replies for you. Perfect for those situations where you need to send a polite thank you or a quick follow up without spending time typing out each message manually. If you're ready to work smarter and not harder, download Magical AI today by visiting getmagical.com or clicking the link in the description below iPhone mirroring was the main attraction for macOS Sequoia when Apple first showed it off at WWDC earlier this year. I was curious to see how I'd actually use it once I could get it working on my device. If you're not familiar, this is the next step in Apple's continuity system. Before, you could do things like universal control, where you could use one Mac to control other Mac computers or iPads. This basically lets you see and control your iPhone on your Mac screen. To make it work, you'll need a compatible Mac computer, which is any Apple Silicon based Mac or an Intel based Mac with a T2 security chip. You'll also need both your Mac computer and the iPhone that you're pairing with to be updated to the latest versions of their operating systems. It's really impressive when you first get this set up, but once you get past the wow factor, you start to think about how you'll actually use this in your daily life. Sure, you can access mail, Safari and messages, but you can do those on your Mac anyway. So to me, there wasn't much of a reason to use them here. The real benefit for me is getting access to the apps that only exist on my iPhone. For example, our security system. If someone comes to the front door, I get a notification on my iPhone and I'd have to stop what I'm doing on my Mac, pick up my phone and look at it on my iPhone. But now the notifications come through on my Mac, so I don't have to break away from what I'm doing as much. I can just tap the notification when it comes through on my Mac and view everything on my Mac screen. You even get the video feed from your security cameras and the audio playing through your speakers, which is really cool. Or maybe you wanna check your banking app and that's only available on your iPhone, or you wanna take a break from work and scroll on Instagram. All of that is now possible thanks to iPhone mirroring. Safari has received significant enhancements in this year's macOS update, making it an even better browser for your Mac. One notable feature is hide distracting items. To use this feature, tap the reader view icon to the left of the address bar and select hide distracting items. You can then click on any item on the page to immediately remove it. Do remember though to press done when you're finished, because if you fail to do this, you may end up unintentionally hiding items that you meant to interact with. Once you're done, the web page will be cleaned up, providing a more detailed and focused reading experience. One important thing to note is that this feature is not an ad blocker. If you refresh the page, the ads that you removed will most likely reappear. Most users will find this feature useful when they plan to spend a lot of time on a specific web page without refreshing it. It is also ideal if you're presenting a cleaner version of a website to someone or for capturing screenshots. Also on the non Apple intelligence side, Reader View has undergone a general cleanup and is now much easier to access. Simply press the Reader View button to the left of the address bar and select Show Reader. When you have Apple Intelligence enabled though, you'll notice a useful feature called Summarize at the top of Articles in Reader Mode. Tap on this and your device will use Apple Intelligence to generate a summary of the article that you're reading. This summary will appear in a bar on the right hand side of your screen. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created plus future ones for just $5 a month or by itself as a one-time payment. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. The calculator was the unexpected star of the show at WWDC when it came out with iPad OS 18. There are some really impressive features in the iPad calculator that you can't find anywhere else. But there's one feature that I think makes the calculator on the Mac really useful now in macOS Sequoia, the conversion feature. Oh, and before anyone says anything, yes, there was a conversion feature in the calculator back in macOS Sonoma, but it was really poorly integrated and most people either didn't use it or didn't even know it was there. To open conversion mode, press Command Option C on your keyboard with the calculator open. 
You can then tap on either the top or bottom unit to choose what you want to convert. There are a bunch of conversions that you can do, like angles, area, energy, power, pressure, speed, and much more. I'm sure most people will use currency. That's definitely the one that I've been using. You can choose which two currencies you want to convert, and you just type in your numbers. The calculator will do the rest for you. You can use the up and down arrows on the left of the calculator to switch the two currencies around. The great thing is that you just type in the number and the calculator will automatically perform the conversion for you right away and it uses currency information that's updated hourly. You can even do calculations here. For example, if I wanted to know how much 2,500 US dollars was in pounds, but I also wanted to take 15% off that, I would just type in 2,500 minus 15% in the US dollar field and the calculator will automatically work out what the pound figure would be. Like the improvements to the password app in macOS Sequoia, it's not the most exciting improvement, but I think people are gonna get a lot of use out of this. Apple has already taken away the need for people to pay for third-party password managers in macOS Sequoia, and it seems like they're doing the same thing for screen snapping apps like Rectangle, Magnet, or Moon. I've been using Moon for years, and since I updated one of my Macs to macOS Sequoia, I can completely uninstall it and rely on the native screen snapping instead. If you're not familiar with screen snapping, it's where you automatically snap the window of apps that you're working in to specific parts of your display. For example, you could have an app on the left and a different one on the right. This is really useful on Macs with smaller displays, but it's really handy if you use multiple monitors or have big external displays. To use screen snapping, simply hover your cursor over the green traffic light of any app. You'll see some options for what you wanna do with that particular window. In the move and resize section, you can choose to move the current window all the way to the left, right, top, or bottom of your screen. In the fill and arrange section, you can have your app go to the full size of the display without going completely full screen, or you can let your Mac try to intelligently position the different windows on your display. Or you can go to window at the top of the screen and you'll have move and resize and full screen tile options that give you lots of additional options. There are a couple of settings that I would definitely recommend changing here. Open system settings and choose desktop and dock from the left hand side. Then scroll down to the window section. I would personally disable the tiled windows have margins option. With this enabled, the windows will go almost to the edges of your display, but they'll leave a small gap of a couple of millimeters around the outside of the display and between any other apps. I also turned off the tile by dragging windows to the screen edges feature because I use my Mac with multiple displays and it didn't work well for me. But I found a better way to tile windows, which is to hold down the option key while dragging a window to the area that you want it to tile to and your Mac will automatically snap it into place. Every year with each new macOS update, I find that the built-in notes app gets closer to being all I need for note-taking. This year is no different. We're not quite at 100% yet, but it is closer than ever. You can now record audio directly into the notes app by pressing the audio icon and then hitting the record button at the bottom of the screen. Your Mac will automatically annotate anything that you say. And the best part is this feature isn't exclusive to Apple intelligence. But when you do have access to Apple Intelligence, this feature gets even better because you can then take those transcriptions and work with them. You would simply double click on a transcription to access it, press the ellipsis button in the upper right of the screen and choose add transcript to note. The plain text then gets added to your note, which you can then right click on, choose writing tools and access all of the AI features like being able to create summaries, key points, lists, tables, or even completely rewriting what you've written. You can now perform calculations directly from within a note. No need to switch to the calculator app. You simply write out the calculation as you work and your Mac will intelligently provide the answer. You can highlight text in your notes by selecting the text and pressing Shift Command E on your keyboard. Also, if you use headings as part of your text formatting, those headings now automatically become collapsible. This means that any content under a heading can be collapsed into that heading making it much easier to organize your notes. So there you go, those are the eight features that I think you should try out first when you download macOS Sequoia to your Mac. What do you think? Which feature are you most excited about? And are there any features that you think should have been included here? I came really close to including the Mail app in here because that has seen some significant improvements in Sequoia, but in general, those are all Apple intelligence features and I wanted to try not to focus too heavily on that in this video. 
As ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.